Hello students, welcome to the lecture on ERP implementation and after the lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Understand the overview of ERP implementation, discuss the ERP package evaluations and selection, explain about handling the vendors, consultants and end users, explain the ERP implementation life cycle, describe the approaches to ERP implementation, define the guidelines for ERP implementation. Let's start with the ERP, which is an acronym that stands for Enterprise Resource Planning. The ERP is a package software solution that addresses the enterprise needs of an organization by tightly integrating the various functions of an organization using a process view of the organization. It is package software and not a custom so made a software for a specific firm. It gives a company an integrated real-time view of its core business processes. The term ERP originally implied system design to plan the use of enterprise-wide resources. Although the initialized ERP originated in the manufacturing environment, today's use of the term ERP system has much broader scope. ERP system typically attempt to cover all basic function of an organization regardless of the organization business or charter. Businesses, non-profit organization, non-governmental organization, governments and other large entities utilize ERP systems. It is the technological backbone of e-business and enterprise wide transaction framework with links into different units in the company. The ERP includes in its breadth all the resource planning for the enterprise including product design, information warehousing, material planning and capacity planning and communication system to name just a few. ERP integrates the functional modules tightly. It is not merely the import and export of data across the functional modules. It integrates all data and processes of an organization into a unified system. A typical ERP system will use multiple components of computer software and hardware to achieve the integration. The integration ensures that the logic of a process that cuts across the function is captured genuinely. This in turn implies that data once entered in any of the functional modules is made available to every other module that needs this data. This leads to significant improvements by way of improved consistency and integrity of data comparing to its previous softwares. ERP uses the relational databases for generation languages, integrated computer-aided engineering tools such as product data managers, PDM, and open system portability to integrate systems such as advanced planning and scheduling APS, finite scheduling system, and manufacturing execution system, MES. The APS tools that are part of a fully integrated ERP system provide excellent what-if scenarios for the manager to determine the most beneficial mix of orders and customers. ERPs are often incorrectly called back-office system indicating that customers and the general public are not directly involved. This is contrasted with front-office system like Customer Relationship Management CRM, system that deal directly with the customer or the e-business systems such as e-commerce, e-government, e-telecom and e-finance or supplier relationship management SRM system. ERP stands for Enterprise Resource Planning. To understand what an ERP system is, let's look at the business objective. The high-level objective for a business is to increase its net income, with net income equaling revenue from sales less the expenses incurred on those sales. Therefore, to increase net income, businesses can improve the customer service that will attract more customers and create loyalty among existing ones, lower the production cost through a better utilization of existing resources, Lower the inventory cost through a better management of inventory cycles. Decrease the distribution costs using smarter and more efficient ways of distribution. To help achieve all these objectives, an ERP system is a powerful tool that can harness the synergies of technology and sound business processes in a common platform. 
ERP systems are a packaged business software that allow a company to automate and integrate the majority of its business processes, including financials, planning, scheduling, capacity, inventory, order processing, purchasing, invoicing, and debtors. ERP shares common data and practices across the entire organization and produces and accesses information in a real-time environment. Physical goods move in and out of companies and individual companies need to keep track of these movements. ERP systems deal with the management of the flow of goods and services upstream to the suppliers and downstream to the customers. One of the most important issues in planning and controlling operations is managing the vast amount of information generated by the business. This information needs to be used in different areas of the business and enable the integration of those areas. So it is important that all relevant information that is spread throughout the organization is brought together regardless of geographical barriers. This information can be manipulated to inform planning and control decisions such as when activities should take place, where they should happen, who should be doing them, how much capacity will be needed, and so on. ERP grew out of an operations perspective from determining some of the basics of operations planning and control to the integration of information from all parts of the organization. In today's competitive world, companies are not only competing with other companies, supply chains are competing with other supply chains. ERP systems assist in the supply chain integration to help smooth the flow of goods and information across the supply chain. This integration enhances the competitive position of the supply chain. Supply chain management connects different organizations in the supply chain. For example, retailers are connected with distributors who are connected to manufacturers who are connected with their suppliers. In recent years, ERP vendors have developed broader suites that provide integrated support across supply chain processes, such as linking inventory replenishment and transportation management. In particular, the use of internet-based communications between customer, suppliers and other partners in the supply chain has opened the possibility of web-based integration. ERP software, among other things, combines the data of formerly separate applications. This makes the worry of keeping numbers in synchronization across multiple systems disappear. Some of the most common software packages that companies use today to manage business processes are shown here. ERP effectively standardizes and reduces the number of specialist software packages required within organizations. In short, ERP helps to integrate the data in an organization under one common platform. The purpose of a common platform is not only to ensure transparency, but also to facilitate in the tracking of information regarding individual orders, such as status reports, dispatch, and so on. Most, if not all, parts of the business can be managed using one software package and one database that is visible to all relevant personnel within the company. If a company succeeds in this, it will achieve significant benefits from ERP. ERP systems offer distinct advantages as they lower operating costs, reduce cycle times, and increase customer satisfaction. This study dates from 1998, but the results are still relevant to implementations carried out today. It shows that there are some unexpected shortfalls in the actual benefits that these systems brought to the surveyed organizations. However, those organizations also received some significant unexpected benefits. In particular, time-based benefits like on-time delivery, faster financial close cycles, and improved order management cycle time. Many companies find that they have to change the way they organize their operations in order to fit in with ERP systems by modifying some of their existing business processes to match those of the ERP functionality. 
So why do companies invest in ERP systems? One benefit is the prospect of turning the company's information systems into a smooth running and integrated machine. Examples of which would be centralized operations, multi-language and currency capabilities, lower inventory and production costs, improved planning, tighter integration of production with sales and distribution, tax advantages through improved asset management, removal of existing legacy systems, time saved in data entry and reporting, increased performance and results measurement, creates discipline and standards across the business. The other main reason why organizations justify the investment in an ERP system is that even if no significant advantage was to be achieved by implementing an ERP system, the company will be placed at a disadvantage by not investing in it because their competitors are doing so. Although an ERP project can bring significant benefits to an organization, if not planned and executed properly, such an initiative can actually increase costs, decrease morale, increase frustration and show limited business benefits. It is important to acknowledge that in the past some ERP implementations have run into problems or even failed due to the following wrong practices. Insufficient education this is the most common complaint when implementing an ERP system. Education is absolutely critical. It forms the foundation for individuals and groups to change habits, procedures and culture. Sometimes people don't understand the basic concepts of the system. The best way to overcome this issue is with extensive education, followed by hands-on training. Ownership is the critical factor for the project to deliver its expected benefits. Successful implementations are almost guaranteed when people in the organization take responsibility for the outcomes. Let us now look at the overview of ERP implementation. The ERP scope usually implies significant changes to staff, work, processes and practices. Generally three types of services are available to help Implement such changes consulting, customizing and support. Implementation time depends on business size, number of modules, customization, the scope of process changes and the readiness of the customer to take ownership for the project. Modular ERP systems can be implemented in stages. The typical project for a large enterprise consumes about 14 months and requires around 150 consultants. Small projects can require months, multinational and other large implementation can take years. Customization can substantially increase implementation times. Implementing ERP typically requires changes in existing business processes. Poor understanding of needed process changes prior to starting implementation is a main reason for project failure. It is therefore crucial that organization thoroughly analyze business processes before implementation. This analysis can identify opportunities for process modernization. It also enables an assessment of the alignment of current processes with those provided by the ERP system. Research indicates that the risk of business process mismatch is decreased by linking current processes to the organization's strategy, analyzing the effectiveness of each process, understanding existing automated solutions. The ERP implementation is considerably more difficult and politically charged in decentralized organizations because they often have different processes, business rules, data semantics, authorization, hierarchies and decision centers. Configuring an ERP system is largely a matter of balancing the way the customer wants the system to work with the way it was designed to work. ERP systems typically build many changeable parameters that modify system operation. For example, an organization can select the type of inventory accounting FIFO or LIFO to employ whether to recognize revenue by geographical unit, product line or distribution channel and whether to pay for shipping costs when a customer returns a purchase. The ERP systems are theoretically based on industry best practices and are intended to be deployed as is. The ERP vendors 
do offer customer configuration options that allow organization to incorporate their own business rules but there are often functionality gaps remaining even after the configuration are complete. The ERP customers have several options to reconcile functionality gaps each with their own pros and cons. Key differences between customization and configuration include Customization is always optional, whereas the software must always be configured before use. Example, setting up cost or profit center structures, organizational trees, purchase, approval rules, etc. The software was designed to handle various configuration and behaves predictably in any allowed configuration. The effect of configuration changes on system behavior and performance is predictable and as a responsibility of the ERP vendor, the effect of customization is less predictable is the customer's responsibility and increases testing activities. Configuration changes survive upgrades to new software version. Some customization example code that uses predefined hooks that are called before or after display Data screens survive upgrades though they require retesting. Other customization, example those involving changes to fundamental data structures are overwritten. Monitoring and controlling consist of those processes performed to observe project execution so that potential problems can be identified in a timely manner and corrective action can be taken when necessary to control the execution of the project. The key benefit is that project performance is observed and measured regularly to identify variances from the project managing plan. Monitoring and controlling includes measuring the ongoing project activities, monitoring the project variables, cost, effort, scope, etc. against the project management plan and the project performance baseline, identifying corrective actions to address issues and risk properly influencing the factors that could circumvent integrated change control so only approved changes are implemented. In multi-phase project, the monitoring and control process also provides feedback between project phases in order to implement corrective or preventive actions to bring the project into compliance with the project management plan. Project controlling should be established as an independent function in project management. It implements verification and controlling function during the processing of a project in order to reinforce the defined performance and formal goals. The tasks of project controlling are also the creation of infrastructure for the supply of the right information and its update, the establishment of a way to communicate disparities of project parameters, the development of project information technology based on an intranet or the determination of a project key, performance index system KPI, divergence analysis and generation of proposal for potential project regulation, the establishment of methods to accomplish and appropriate project workflow organization, project control and governance, creation of transparency among the project parameters.
Did you know? In 1990, Gartner Group first employed the acronym ERP as an extension of Material Requirements Planning MRP, later Manufacturing Resource Planning and Computer Integrated Manufacturing. The ERP system are now available in all sizes and shapes for all platforms and developing environments. Evaluating the ERP system available in the marketplace and then selecting one for organization is a very critical task. This decision can make or break an organization. If the choice is not right, then the organization will pay dearly for it. So we think that all ERP packages are the same. Think again. Because they are not. Of the more than 50 ERP packages available, the features they offer vary as do the technologies they support. The technologies they use, the architecture on which they are built and the available platforms. Each package has its own strength and weaknesses. But the ERP vendors will give the impression that their product is just as good as any other. It is valuable for giving an overview of functionality and a glimpse at the differentiator for that vendor's offer. But if we compare the literature or listen to a vendor's presentation, it would be very difficult to evaluate which package is the best or which would be most suitable for organization. Deciding which package is suited to organization is a difficult task. If we go by what is written in the product brochure or what the salespeople say, we will find it very difficult to make a decision and might end up with the wrong choice. So package selection is something that should be done in a systematic and scientific manner. The most important factor to keep in mind when analyzing the different packages is that none of them are perfect. Once we have decided to implement the ERP system, the selection process is one of the most important phases of the ERP implementation because the package to select will decide the success or failure of the project. Since ERP system involves huge investment, once a package is purchased, it is not an easy task to switch to another one. So it is a do it right the first time proposition. The consequences of choosing a wrong package are catastrophic, often forcing the company to close shop. There are many ERP packages available in the market. Analyzing all the packages before reaching a decision is not a viable solution. So it is better to limit the number of packages that are evaluated to less than five. It is always better to do a thorough and detailed evaluation of a small number of packages than to do a superficial analysis of dozen of packages. The company should do a pre-evaluation screening to limit the number of packages that are to be evaluated by the committee. Since all packages are not equal, the pre-evaluation process should eliminate those packages that are not at all suitable for the company's business processes. It is always better to form a selection or evaluation committee that will do the evaluation process. This committee should comprise of people from the various departments, the functional experts, Top management, preferably the CIO or COO, consultants, package experts and end users. This team can provide the different perspectives and can ensure that the needs of all stakeholders are addressed. We can describe the role of vendors, consultants and end user as vendors. Once we make a decision to go in for an ERP package, the marketing executives of the different vendors will swam. Each will have colorful and excellently produced brochures and presentation claiming that their product is the best one for us. They will use all the tricks to get hooked. So it is better that we have a strategy for dealing with these vendors. Since we have done a detailed evaluation of the few packages that meet pre-selection criteria, we can be prepared for the vendor presentation. This point is being stressed again and again because most vendors can make presentation that leave potential users dazzled. The selection may thus end up being based on a set of factors that are insufficient for arriving at a well-informed and judicious decision. So instead of just listening to presentation, we should be prepared with question. The question should be prepared beforehand and should address all concerns. As soon as a company signs a contract, the vendor should supply the product and its documentation. Once the software is delivered, the company can develop the training and testing environment for the implementation team. The roles of the vendors during and after implementation of ERP are the vendor is responsible for fixing any problem in the software that the implementation team encounters. The vendor should have a licensed officer to constantly interact with the implementation team. 
The vendors provide initial training for the company's key users. These key users are the ones who will define together with the consultants how the software is to serve the company. They are also called as in-house functional experts who decide how the functionalities are implemented to adapt the product to suit the company's unique requirements. It is very important to provide these in-house experts a true training on the features of the package. Business consultants are professionals who specialize in developing techniques and methodologies for dealing with the implementation. They are the experts in the administration, management and control of various problems that cropped up during the implementation. Each of them has many man years of implementation experience with various industries and would have time tested methodologies and business practice that ensure successful implementation. The role of the ERP consultant is known to all of us as we have seen many of them in action. The company places its trust in the consultants that its business objectives will be achieved. The consultants ensure the success of the project. This produces quantifiable results to the satisfaction of the company management. The ERP end user are the people who will be using the ERP system once it is implemented. Most of the functions that the end user used to perform are being automated by the ERP system. The ERP system brings drastic transformation in the actual work process which leads to change in all job description. Once system has been implemented, the consulting company will typically enter into a support agreement to assist staff to keep the ERP software running in an optimal way. To minimize additional costs and provide more realism into the needs of the units to be affected by ERP as an added service to customers, the option of creating a committee headed by the consultant using participative management approach during the design stage with the client's heads of departments, no substitute allowed to be affected by the changes in ERPs to provide hands-on management control requirements planning. Initial investment in acquiring and implementing an ERP system is substantial in terms of both human efforts and financial resources. After successful implementation, the system goes to maintenance mode and organizations start getting value out of the investment. After a prolonged period due to changes in business and technological paradigm, it becomes more and more difficult and expensive to maintain and extend the system. The process of re-implementation and beginning of a new cycle starts. The ERP life cycles which encompasses entire 10 to 20 years of effective operating life are often confused with ERP implementation life cycle. Some important matter concerning this phase will have direct bearing on subsequent phases of ERP life cycle. Degree of matching of vanilla ERP product to current business need and extent of customization done particularly source code customization, commitment of the vendor for future development and their financial health, support issues including license fees and escalation thereof. After the system is left and rolled out, there will be a period of turmoil. Due to lack of understanding, a lot of confusion will prevail amongst users. There will be teething problems and some software bugs will invariably appear. We retraining some tweeting of the system and assistance from a responsive help desk. This phase should be over within six months to one year and the system should start stabilizing. This is the longest period of life cycle when the organization start realizing value of the investment. User will get familiar and start owning the system. Some changes will be continuing such as new report, different workflows, some localization on taxes, etc. Maintenance will be covered by service level agreement and tailing payment of license fee to the vendor. There are three common approaches to implementing a new ERP system. Enterprise wide full installation. This approach was very common in the early days of ERP installation as at the time many large corporations were trying to quickly become Y2K compliant. The biggest challenge companies encounter was getting all the employees to cooperate and accept a new software system at the same time. If we are leaning towards this method of installation, make the transition easier by clearly outlining the ways that the new ERP software will be an improvement over existing software. Unit by unit. This is common approach among large or diverse companies where there are not many common processes across business units. 
management will locate a particularly open-minded and flexible team and install a pilot ERP installation in that department. Some process that do not vary much across the company such as financials, bookkeeping and HR may be installed across the entire enterprise. But the pilot department has its own separate ERP system and database or instance. Key process installation. Smaller companies often opt to focus on a few key processes for the initial ERP installation. For instance, they may decide to start out using the ERP applications, financial module and add other features as the company grows. Traditional ERP software often cause problems down the road for this type of installation since they require choices to be made at the time of the initial installation that could not easily be changed at a later date. An ERP implementation has several facets to it and if not executed properly, could result in a business disaster rather than an advantage. We discuss five important parameters for a successful ERP implementation. Backup of the executive management. The executive management should always be closely associated with an ERP implementation. Having a top-down approach will ensure successful ERP implementation. This is because the top management can understand the company's ability to adopt the changes and will push for the application until the last level, guaranteeing a fast implementation. Create buy-in among shop floor people. People are resistant to changes and this holds true for ERP too. For instance, if we are implementing an ERP process in a manufacturing sector, we have to first understand the people who will use it. While the corporate people will accept it willingly, the people on the shop floors will definitely resist it. Avoid excessive customization. The ERP is like a lubricant that will help business run faster. Many a times people mold the ERP system to be implemented to fit their business processes. For successful ERP implementation, however, it is much easier to slightly twist the business process rather than the ERP system. ERP audit. Auditing an ERP system is essential for gaining control over access and information integrity. Security audits protect the system from intrusions and criminal behavior that can be destructive. The system owner has the obligation to his user to control access and verify system integrity. Audits are a critical tool for the system owner to establish a level of documentation for the enterprise level piece of software. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. The ERP is a package software solution that addresses the enterprise needs of an organization by tightly integrating the various functions of an organization using a process view of the organization. The ERP scope usually implies significant changes to staff work processes and practices evaluating the ERP system available in the marketplace and then selecting one for organization is a very critical task. The nature of the ERP software package typically mandates the number and expertise of MIS personnel needed for ongoing support. The ERP life cycles which encompass entire 10 to 20 years of effective operating life are often confused with ERP implementation life cycle. Initial investment in acquiring and implementing an ERP system is substantial in terms of both human efforts and financial resources.